I mean, if, but I think that this is very cheap because Part it just goes uh, sage, sage free on the on the on the eight megabyte block and it's gone. It doesn't know that it's not going to resurrect something else somewhere else. I mean, I, I all I can tell you, I'm, I'm blissfully ignorant of the internals of Cypher and Python, so this is pretty much all speculation. I just have. As I said, I have notes that I didn't bring, and I can show you exactly what I did. And we this, could also this use is why the keyboard. We, why we should have like uh, something in SageD6 that goes into detail, or at least also on IRC and so on, just to figure out what the problem is, so we see it on all layers. Which makes it all, well, this is, this is why I wrote that validating um, you know, Python is very difficult. Initially I wrote it sucked, but... We might have to use it again. <laughs> Okay, somebody else use slide. Use this. So uh, we do a quick introduction to Valgrind. Um, I didn't really have time to flesh this all out or even spell check it. So at Sage Day Six, it should be a pro proper presentation. Finished the night before as usual because I put it off too long. Um, what you do, what you should do to like, there's different modes and cert like the PyMalloc and the PyDebug stuff. Um, then the Sage SPG. SPKGs with debug option is something that doesn't exist yet, but at least for the Sage library, should be fairly easy to add. Um, what the options are to call it, and then there's like four tools plus an external one, and I'm going to cover the first two pretty much. The cache grind is very, very, uh, well, in my opinion, it's not that particularly interesting. The call grind is pretty cool, but I don't have the, uh, the tool to interpret the output graphically, and it doesn't run on OS X yet. And then there's Omega, which is extremely cruel, but unfortunately does not compile with uh, 3.3.0 trunk. And uh, I couldn't fix it. I tried it, but I didn't get very far. And then there's like some certain specific issues with Pari and Gap. The Pari thing might be fixed, but we have to we have to investigate that. Yes. So um, Valorant runs under Intel CPUs. AMD 64 CPUs and Intel CPUs, obviously, um, also at PowerPC 32 and 64 bit of Linux. I regularly use it on PowerPC 32, and once I get my PlayStation set up and running, I'm probably going to also compile it on a 64 bit PowerPC. AIX, well, who cares? No access. Uh, there's various ports of various versions to BSD, and OS X 10.5 is going to contain a, a port done by Apple which is all conjecture and rumor, but there's allegedly the lawyers keeping uh, the public from seeing it, but once 10.5 oh, is out, I will surely check it out. And um, I'm fairly certain it's going to do x86 and x86.64. I'm not sure about the PowerPC port. But since it's all, it was discussed in some, some, uh, some news groups. So, um, and obviously, if it's on the internet, it must be true. Especially if it's about Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Evil people. <laughs> so, um, you can. Python has its own mal, and what it does, it, it allocates a large chunk of memory and parcels out bits and pieces. So, uh, Valorant doesn't like that because it thinks, well, you freed something that was smaller and inside something that you is something larger that you allocated. Um, Actually, but that's something I can do that. The you can. Per default, we do not we do not use without PyMalloc and PyDebug. PyDebug is actually useful if you want to do reference counts and so on. And actually, I think uh, Robert wrote some macros at least to access the reference count options in Cypher, but I don't think it ever made it upstream, or at least nobody's using it yet. But I was hoping that sooner or later we're gonna we're gonna start using that because it's quite useful, yeah, yeah. or I hope, in tracking down the reference count issues with the dictionaries and so on. Um, it would be very nice if hmm. we could compile every package with without optimization and with debug output, because that makes reading back to, uh, that make, great, makes reading the, the stack trace much much easier, especially the symbol ones, because from a hex number of guessing the symbol is kind of silly. Um, even without the pi malloc, Python produces lots and lots of issues with Valgrind. There's suppression files, which actually means that. Valgrind checks, well, is this error supposed to show up or not? And then it suppresses it. I really don't run it with uh, suppression. Usually, I just ignore that, that part of the log. 
Um, one, one big issue with, with our Pi malloc is that it runs, makes Python run about four to five times slower than we did. And on top of that, the, uh, the tools have all slowdown factors of somewhere between 20 and 100. So meaning <laughs> anything that takes uh, two minutes is going to take, well, hours usually. And uh, I actually run, at some point I ran some uh, session from William Wave, it took like an hour and a half to hit in real time. <laughs> just <laughs> set it up it's in screen. I just figured, well, I'll check it in a couple of days later. And as it turned out, uh, for some reason, I deleted the the directory. It was running it off. <laughs> so <laughs> I got a very weird backtrace. I'm like, ooh, what is going on here? And as it turned out, I was the idiot who deleted the directory in the first place. But that particular, there's, uh, there's interestingly, um, also, if you have more than a million errors, Memcheck tells you literally, go fix your code. It's no longer keeping track of errors. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's a command line switch to turn it off, but I never knew about that because I never hit a million errors, but it was a very long computation. <laughs> I thought Jeez. it was quite amusing. Uh, yeah, that's not an Easter egg. useful. Um, if you've outlined singular, it tells you zero bytes allocated, zero bytes deallocated, no loss possible. And it was also in the in the GMP debug session that I said, well, let's debug around singular and see if they have issues. And uh, we were quite inebriated, so it was quite funny. And it, we speculated what it would do, and it turned out later on we looked it up and they used MMAP. So anything that does MMAP or SBRIC is not, uh, uh, does not show up in Valgrind. You have to use malloc or C alloc or anything like that. If you use MMAP, it doesn't work. And I was talking to Michael Brickenstein at Mega 2007, I wanted actually to ask him about if there's some magic switch that makes uh, OMALOC use really malloc instead of MMAP. And I wasn't, I don't remember the details or if he, if he answered the question, but. You were um, inebriated again? No, I was sober, it was <laughs> okay. quite early in the day. And I, it was like the, the night before the talk, so I had to uh. <laughs> Well, it would have made a much entertaining talk, but <laughs> probably the last time I get invited here. Um, anyways, um, even um, what Singular does internally is use a slab allocator, which makes the whole thing a little bit more complicated, but it's, it's going to be fairly easy to wrap uh, MMAP and Ma to, to substitute malloc for MMAP. Because in, the funny thing is, back in the days when Singular was written, that was necessary for performance reasons. Nowadays, if you have a recent GLibc, Anything you malloc over 512 kilobytes is mapped anyway. It used to be 128 kilobytes. You can tune it with parameters and so on. But I mean, uh, it's no longer technically necessary. But well, Signal just keeps using it. And I don't think they're going to change it anytime soon. So um, it's not enough. For some reason, Python makes the Python we use makes the, the current stable release of Valgrind crash. Without sec fault, without anything, it just dies. So um, I usually compile trunk anyway, because they I, I regularly manage it to crash the internal libvex, which is the uh, part of the library, which is or which is the library inside Valgrind that is used to emulate instructions. So um, because of that, I never run the stable version anyway. And I usually keep track of the SVN mailing list. And if something interesting comes up that I use, I just update. And um, I get like one, one ticket outstanding, another one I didn't mention the mailing list because it, it's an issue in Kukulip that crashes not only GDB, but also the Microsoft compiler and the Microsoft debugger. And uh, well, I can show you one at one point. It's very entertaining. Uh, in a, on top of that, the SSE 2 and 3 support in Valgrind, the stable Valgrind release is missing a couple of instructions that is used by the Core Duo patch as well as the Opdron code. And the, op, the, the Opdron patch um, actually required to use an even more recent version, which really surprised me. So um, what you can do is we have an experiment, uh, I maintain an experimental Valgrind package which you can just install and it installs it in uh, state root local bin and everything just works. Um, we have four tools currently supported and it, it is memcat, memcheck, massive, call grind and cache grind which I will go into what they do later on down the road. Um, you can Valgrind in combination with testall and minus t 
but it doesn't work together with GDB yet. And I think it's unlikely we ever get that to work because otherwise we end up fail grinding GDB. Or we're going to launch <laughs> Sage out of GDB via Valgrind. I mean, it's just, well. <laughs> and it also that would require fixing, fixing ticket 21, which is the command line option parsing or whatever. That ticket is quite old. And uh, getting, getting it to work with test all and test was, was a pain in the ass anyway. So I, I have no desire to fix it in combination with GDB and notebook or whatever else. So, I mean. um, if you look at the, f there's like, um, what happens if you call Sage Valgrind is it calls uh, Sage root local bin Sage, Sage dash tool, which in turn calls another function, and that, uh, which calls another script, and those have, those set uh, default options, which is usually my preferred options because I wrote it. And uh, it, is, it has been planned to actually introduce some environment variables so that people can supply their own option without editing the, two, the, um, the scripts and so on. So if you want to do that, just let me know. It's, I've been using Valgrind for like literally four or five years, so I, I was hoping that the defaults pretty much work. So um, MemCheck is pretty much what Valgrind is best known for because it detects memory leak. If you scribble over memory that is not properly allocated, if you read over the end of a buffer, if you read before a buffer and so on. If you have mismatched deletes, free delete or delete with the, with the uh, square brackets, the, anathal, the million error limit, and um, also the, the slowdown, it's, it's about 50 to 100. And the thing in the documentation, it says 50, but it's, it can get closer to 100. And um, I, I pretty much ended up Dell grinding on Sage Matthews, yeah. Matthews usually because it's, it's usually up, and also it has enough memory because not only it, if you do mem check, you also need a multiple of the memory because it keeps track of each allocation, the allocation, and so and so on. So if you have something large, well, I got I got a big box at home now, so if push comes to shove, I use that. But um, and the log files usually end up in home.sage. We, we, that is also hard code at the moment that can be changed if it is so desired. But Maybe they should be in like home stage Valgrind or something. Uh, Sorry. Okay, massive. Well, or say, um, Valgrind is the front end and then there's tools. So we have mem check, the massive, call grind, and cache grind. Mm -hmm. So massive is a, is a tool that profiles heap or and or stack allocations. Um, I'm not sure what the slowdown factor is. I think it's about 20-ish. It's not as bad as mem, uh, mem, uh, mem check. You can get pretty PostgreSQL pig files, which I will show uh, soon. And I also discovered a bug when I was valgrinding some of Williams' example. Apparently, the plotting code wraps at either 2 to the 31st or 2 to the 32nd bytes. Oh, well, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think many people actually valgrind that big examples. And um, there's a bug in, in the massive tool, or at least the buglet, which means that the postgres file ends up in current working directory in the tree instead of in home sage where they should be. So I might fix that down the road or mm -hmm. hope that some report it down the road and hope somebody else will fix it. Um, call grind is very interesting because it shows you uh, call traces of the code and it counts the instructions. So if you have if you have like a profiling views uh, GDB's profiling support, you get a very, very coarse resolution. And if you have C++ code, which has member functions and those are inline, you just get pretty much garbage out. So um, there's other profilers out there, like um, Intel is a pretty good product, and it, is, it does also use the performance counter registers and the CPUs and so on. So you can get comparable output, but not from free tools. And obviously, the Intel. Um, that optimize, well, that, that uh, profiling tool is not free, so, and I wouldn't spend money on it because Comrade seems to be superior. Um, there's actually a tool that visualizes the output, and what you can do is you, you can very easily see which bits, um, which bits happen in the Python code, which bits happen in the, the Cython code, which bits happen in the library, and you can, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have it installed, and I don't really. I can use it, but I'm not an expert at using it yet because I've never used Colgrant in detail. 
Mike Hansen uses it apparently quite a lot, so hopefully he can contribute yeah, something. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, no, it's like K call ground or K cash ground. I think it's, it it's used called K cash ground for some reason because they all slow support cash ground. Yeah, cash ground and call ground write the same format or something close. So, and there was talk about K cash ground being ported to OS X because if you have a K, if you have a KDE application. Every time the class is K class, you just substitute Q class, and the port is more or less done. And there was someone actually who volunteered to port it to OS X, and I assume if Apple is going to port, if Apple is going to port Dialgram in total, there's no re there's no real reason not to co not to port uh, K cache ground. Doesn't that great? Doesn't that great? Though. Well, cache ground concentrates on how much is. Uh, how many how many of your instructions do hit the cache L1 and L2? Not something particularly interesting from my perspective. Very similar to call grind, and uh, well, there's people who like it. I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not the guy who's writing assembly code and see if the cache edge is hit or not. I mean, that's not really my job. But it's out there. It's integrated. <laughs> that's his job. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know somebody who might be interested, but. That, that does both instruction and data caches. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that doesn't necessarily only affect code, code in assembly. I mean, if you write sort of optimized C code, it, it's still very. Yeah, but very you switch you switch compiler versions and it's all different. That's, sure. I mean, so I mean, if you. But the dip, but it can make a difference of a factor of ten or more. No, that, 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 that's actually not. So people true care a lot. When you're writing really just. Low-level code, even if it's in C. Yeah, just but, no, but you, if, if you you talk you talk about optimization it. levels, yeah, and it's all different. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's interesting, but I mean, this is in, out of my perspective. If you care about L1 and L2 hits and so on, and look how it's the code, kind of you write assembly anyway. I mean, or at least if you're serious about it. <laughs> well, well I, mean, I, I it might just give you a feeling, you know, you yeah. should, uh, for instance, transpose your matrix first, like something you know, something yeah. stupid you didn't think about first. Right? Then you, uh, yeah. so, so if you transpose it, maybe suddenly, you know, everything can be yeah. a, a lot of cash. I mean, somehow this is also worth thinking about if you want to think about multiprocessing stuff. Often, yeah. you know, it's kind of a small model of that happening. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. of latency. I mean, yeah. it's not my cup of tea. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is... Wait, there's, the there's a question in the back. Oh, sorry. How do you access these tools? Uh, in Valgrind, right? like Valgrind. Valgrind minus minus tool equal uh, cache, uh, cache grind or whatever. It's it's in the manual. Actually. Oh, it's a, it's a, like a, a command option for Valgrind. Yes. Oh, no, it's it's the it's Valgrind just selects a, it selects a tool. It defaults to mem check up to a certain level. I didn't know that. Well, this is actually the coolest tool because um, unfortunately it doesn't work. <laughs> at least not. At least not. At least not with the version that we need to, in order not to crash, in, by invoking Python in the first instance. So, what it does is actually it's quite interesting because um, it doesn't show you where the memory is allocated. Well, if you leak it, if you leak memory, and then you terminate the program, uh, memcheck tells you where you allocated the memory. Omega shows you where you actually leak it. You mean where you didn't call free? No, well, it's like... <laughs> that seems impossible. <laughs> well, <laughs> there is... There is <laughs> by the flow, logical flow of your program, you should have to deal this very at this point. It actually talks to you, but... You know, um, it is, it is Michael. somewhat experimental, but I mean, it, work, it works on simple examples. At least, wow. well, the author clearly states uh, it's experimental. But what's the what's the algorithm? How, how does it figure out? <laughs> I, I can send you the I can send you the, the link and it he describes it. I actually sent him an email asking him to fix it, but he didn't do it. No, because uh, it was against three point two something, and they changed a whole lot of the internal stuff. So I knew what was wrong, but I don't know enough about Valgrind internally to fix it. Or I didn't want to spend the two or two weeks to two years figuring out. <laughs> it is only x eighty six x eighty six sixty four. I can I can pull up the example in a minute. I mean, um, I mean that's why I say it's endlessly cool, but well, it maybe does not work particularly well. But no, we had a, we had a case where you would allocate a matrix with the, with zeros, 
and then something would happen to the matrix during dense linear algebra. And some of the MPZs or whatever else was in was allocated in that area for the matrix was leaked somehow. And it was a very complicated uh, algorithm, a very high level algorithm, so we couldn't just pinpoint and say, well, this is this is calling real echelon form and it leaks somewhere in there. But um, so you just sit there, well, you know there it is out that's where it's allocated, but you don't know what call path is particularly taken where it's actually leaked, and I tried to get Omega to work to actually see how much how it actually would perform on a program as large as uh, Sage, but well didn't get very far. There's no way to use it anyway. I mean, yeah, you, you can say at this point you, you're using this uh, particular piece of memory for the last time, and after that you should probably yeah. kill it. And this is why it doesn't work for, you know, real examples. Tracks where the references are. Yeah, yeah like like you're using yeah. using this point of the last time. Yeah, the last time we see it. Yeah, it goes out of scope here, so yeah. you should either free it here or you you well. Yeah. I mean, the the website does give an example, and it is stated that. Uh, you can't compile with anything beyond O0 because it just screws with the terror. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting, I mean, out of the color brand project, a lot of interesting tools have emerged. And I think uh, if you look at the commercial world, there's, there's a tool called Purify, which is wickedly expensive. I have access to it at the university, but uh, it's hideously to use. It's Windows or Solaris or something like that only. And you actually have to compile the program with um, Purify support. With Valgrind, you can take any binary run on it, and I mean, that's why it's so funny, because uh, there's a lot of code out there where people don't use Valgrind to check, and it's like shooting fish in a barrel to find bugs. I mean, GCC leaks, the current 4.3 build, which I think is really embarrassing. But, oh. And I mean, it doesn't leak a couple bytes, it leaks, well, <laughs> I, I actually can show you um, Linbox 1.1.3, the official release, versus 1.1.4 once it gets out in about a month. And <laughs> there's still one example in there that leaks 8 megabytes in a tenth of a second. And you, if you look at the code, there's like the call path, which does the deallocation. And somebody, it's like a very convoluted calling convention. There's many code paths, and they just uncommented all the deallocations. Because then it ran, it just leaked a whole bit, a lot of memory. It's not an example that is compiled they, by default. They uncommented the deallocations, or they commented yeah, they out? They uncommented them. Well, they, they commented them out. Yeah. Oh, to make that's it faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's not get slowed down by deallocation. Well, if, if you look at spec, if you look at spec suites, they use a specific huh. heap allocation library to be faster. Mm -hmm. So the spec suites have to be run with like 8 gigabytes of RAM because otherwise it all implodes. But it makes much better numbers that nobody cares about in reality. Yeah. Anyway, well. I believe that. Oh, well, well I didn't talk about this. Um, Pari has a problem when the it exceeds the heap. And uh, that might have... Pari or Gap? Yeah, Gap yeah, yeah, uses... Both of them. Okay. No problems. It's just the Perry one makes some sense. Yeah, the, the Perry <laughs> one might be fixed potentially, and um, the one on the gap is not. It, I initially thought I thought it did was because it was as brick, but um, that I wrote. I found oh. a test. Okay, so is this the Perry C library as used by Sage, or is this Perry all by itself? That's that's that fails if yeah. you run the doc test where you create Excellent. a list with a million. Or okay, million I think that or. there's very good, very good chance that's fixed. Yeah, yeah, well. From the coding sprint last the night. Once the patches are going to revisit yep. that. What happens with GAP is that it can't allocate it work its workspace, and I haven't figured out what is wrong. Hmm. Initially, thought it was due to Sbrick, but um, which well, what Sbrick extends the heap, and it's something you wouldn't want to call these days. Let, let <laughs> that the seal it deal with that. I mean. It used to be, apparently, it's quite popular in the 80s, but, well, back then, you just had to do everything manually. But, um, so, that is somewhat of an open question, because right now you can Valgrind the vast majority of the doc tests, and what actually happens is, the, the default way it is run is that memcheck also, well, if you run memcheck, it would also memcheck each child process. You end up with a... Hmm literally uh, a couple thousand log files and then you have differentiated between what is interesting and what not usually seen by the size, but I'll show an example later. So, um, any more questions before we go to the real interesting bit? Have you 
uh, or has anyone done any work on Mac OS X with uh, Malloc debug or any of the uh, tools they have? Not that I know. But it's, um, it became quite clear that Mac OS X support was very high on the priorities of the Valorant developers. And I don't know how much, well, it might be that some people, some of the developers or some of the higher ups and develop the food chain and for that right now that Apple is doing the work so it never got, got off the ground but uh, hmm. it's, it's being actively ported to NetBSD mm -hmm. and there was a lot of talk of sharing that port with FreeBSD and obviously same yeah. kernel, similar C library and it's not it's not that far to OS X now but um, it surprised me quite a bit that I mean obviously I think it's the, if, you, if you have any kind of developing, development tool that would make me use Linux and nothing else, it's, it's Valorant. Mm -hmm. Or at least for that particular function. So, so wait, what is the current, what exactly is the current status of using val anything valgrind dish on OS X? Is it just there's n no, nothing at all? Nothing at all, but okay. with 10.5 it's going to be there. Okay. Either, well, either there are tools that are... It's just not Valgrind. There's other correct. tools. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, there's all, I mean, there's there's other memory debugging tools, also free ones, like electric fans and so on. Mm -hmm. But I think they're all inferior to Valgrind, but that's primarily because I've always used Valgrind. And then electric fans does also LD preload and all that kind of magic, and it doesn't really detect all the really, really interesting bits, in my opinion. And I see. It's just winner takes all, and Valgrind made the race. Uh -huh. so, so why are we doing all this? This is uh, if this process, and it's been running for... Uh, a couple of days, and it's currently at 7.1 gigabytes. Well, <laughs> as I said, it used to eat about half the memory in a day. So, and um, what we have here is the code, which is one of the tickets. Okay, well, the official website is valgrind.org. Um, I'm going to end up pretty much getting a lot of the information I'm going to put on the official slides for Sage Day 5 if there's going to be such a talk. Pretty much going to pull it on the manual. You have the manual, if like, the documentation is excellent for Valorant. There's not much um, missing. And the, the developer's manual is quite active. There's actually some, some preliminary version in the wiki, and I'm going to update that from the talk and so on. And it actually, well, this is, a, this is the exact error message for Lipari. And uh, there's potentially workarounds for that uh, for that over underrunning heap, but I haven't looked into it due to lack of time. And there's like a to-do list, and I opened a ticket for that and stuck it to book it. Well, one can try. And okay. So there's also I talked about massive. I'm not gonna run it. This is one of the outputs from massive. And what it does is it show heap and stack allocation over time. So on one axis you have time, the other axis you have memory, and the, the big brown one on top is Lipari's 100 megabyte stack, which we're not going to get rid of anytime soon. Actually, we're changing it to 8 megabytes, probably. Because we now have, um, last night, um, Gonzalo and I spent a lot of work to make it so that the Perry stack can automatically grow if it runs out of memory during a calculation, and that works well now. Yeah, so point. there's no reason to allocate such a large stack initially. So um, well, it's, in the it's smaller now. That's part of yeah, gen.pyx, the Perry C library. Um, it was allocating 100 by default because it's really, really painful if, sure. if it fails over. Um, so you want it to not fail, so it has to be big enough to deal with most cases. However, now it's fine to allocate something smaller because it will automatically grow when needed. So it's still there, though. <laughs> so we're not getting rid of it, Actually, it I being there. Actually, I argument it was told it's but it's smaller. Yeah, no, no, but that was before before the automatic extension. Yeah. And because he closed the ticket with my yep. with my suggested the 16 megabytes in the mean. Well, I I'm going to reopen the ticket and you get you win because <laughs> it's going to change back to I mean it's going to shrink because there's no the only reason to make it big is just that we didn't have automatic doubling. Yeah. No, and I, I didn't know automatic doubling would work, but we I mean we got it to work last night. Perfectly. I, yeah, I know, but the thing is I didn't know that LibPower was such a pick memory one. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you said that, well, if you got a problem, they just tell you on the mailing list, allocate two gigabytes of memory yep. and try again. I mean, <laughs> 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 I mean that, that can't be really the solution to a memory issue. And on a 64-bit box, well, you might, well, it's, it's all, 
it's all uh, it's all not faulted in. You can so you might as well just allocate a 60 gigabyte stack. But Gonzalez is going to tell you all the fine details you don't really want to know about in detail. That uh, the power just like grows and grows and grows the stack uh, the, uh, until it reaches half of the allocated memory. So if you're generous and you allocate 16 gigabytes and you only have 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're, <laughs> you're going to start it all paging it out to disk and so on. So. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on the record, so I'm not going to say anything about pa bad about Pari. Now, I can pause this. After the talk. <laughs> Is that on the record? Yeah. But, well, I've, yeah. Said, I've said way worse things on the record, but not, not on film, so. <laughs> and if I get really pissed off, I can always change to my other uh, user and flame somebody on the GMP mailing list or so. I mean, that always goes over well. What's the username? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. You don't want to pull a secret identity. Uh, yeah, don't say Damn all sex. So, um, this is massive text output. Not particularly interesting right now. I'm going to go into it in greater detail. Um, but, I mean, it takes, takes a while to get used to it. So I've got a couple more pretty pictures. This one is also, again, the Lipari stack. And you can see at the very end that, well, PyCode new leaves a whole lot of memory that is not properly deallocated. GP malloc also leaks some memory or does not free it properly. But um, I don't have, um, John Voigt did some some Cython programming about four weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, and it actually turned out that for some reason he um, he made some mistakes with reference counts. So actually, it ended up a lot of objects that should have been deleted because they were temporary keep kept were kept by the Python memory manager, and it created uh, a lot of problems because it would grow very rapidly. And in that particular case, you had all kinds of false positives because it looked like NTL was leaking and all all over the place. Mm. So um, yeah. It's a little bit tricky and takes some um, some understanding of what's going on. I think Robert, in the end, told him pretty much what he was doing wrong. So, um, but it's usually with massive, you see very quickly what is going on. And if components that usually do not leak leak, it's usually a reference issue somewhere in the code. And I was hoping that I still have that somewhere, but it doesn't look like it. John, I actually found that uh, it wraps it max into whatever problem, which really surprised me. <laughs> so, is there anything else? That's the same. What interesting. This is the calculus doc test. Hmm. Uh, interesting. So, is maxima, I mean, calculus, all it ever really does is called maxima. So yeah, how is that relevant to this? Massive, Maxima's yeah. massive run does not show up there. Okay. Because every process oh. has, has its own. Um, mm -hmm. I see. Has its own file. So I mean, and because it, it ends up in current working directory, you, you sometimes have to look for it. Yeah, I guess what I just said is sort of wrong because a lot of the calculus stuff ends up the doc tests involve conversions to all kinds of crazy objects, yeah. and the, the doc tests are more complicated than the code in that one file. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to the interesting bits. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I ran. That's oh yeah. This is this is what. Um, Super cold. If he's doing some kind of computation, he's doing it for every prime. I guess until he runs out of memory to <laughs> runs out of memory of time. So can I do that computation? Actually, he saves an object which um, I took out of this, and this used to leak horrendously because of linear algebra issues. Um, most of them have been fixed, but um, as you can see here, this this usually takes a couple seconds, but, um, oh, we got to exit. So it took 110 minutes of CPU time to actually run that, so that's why 
if you run if you run something large, you just stick it in screen and check after you do it before you go to bed and check in the morning. But you can see here that each we did four runs and it's always increasing by a substantial amount. And but this is usually not in not outright an indication of leak. The, the rule of thumb seems to be if you do the same operation three times and it increases, it's just internal dictionaries and Python object and caching and so on. So if you do it more than more than three times and it still leaks, you, you have a real problem. This is ticket. I still got it, so I mean it's all in track and so on. And um, this is the big run, and this is the one uh, I used instead of 10 to the fifth, I used 10 to the four, power of four. And obviously, because the matrix is so small, that runs more quick, more quickly. So, oops. So now we have three different runs. This, this is actually be, uh, we we forked uh, for safe startup plus plus quit and not invoking any kind of other uh, pro program pair p expect. We end up with three, three processes that are valid rather than mem check in this particular case. And usually you have this is the pit. So we, this is the big one is the the Sage process, the Python process of Sage itself. Uh, this is I think it's LS or it's Bash or whatever else something 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 from the uh, shell. And this is also well because it's dot one. I think it's a thread. So. If you start a process and each thread gets appended um, a number, an increasing number, and so on, so, and you can see that the the plain startup plus quit has a has a shorter log than the other two. This is this is the one with uh, where the prime started to ten to the fifth to the power of five, and this is ten to the power of four because I started this after the first one, after seeing that each round took thirty minutes, and I wanted to have some output. Um, now, if you look in the, and this, this used to be five and a half megabytes before we started working on uh, valve writing away the issues. So this is quite shorter and you can actually, well, it's much more, potentially much more easier to read, but um, the, the ultimate goal is to get down to a couple of bytes because then it pretty much tells you nothing happened. But uh, this will be a while, I assume. So. Usually the first thing you do is you just do a tail because at the very end it prints a summary. And um, this is the leak summary. Uh, can you read it or should I? And uh, this is this is new. Definitely lost zero bytes and zero blocks. That used to be quite a lot more. And it was worked by um, William Martin Booking. What's his first name? You. What's his first name? It is? Okay, well. Put that up, the current Turkish names. And um, we still have this category possibly lost, which is 280, 280 kilobytes, so not particularly interesting. The still reachable is, is still big, but this is 100 megabytes of the Lipari stack and a whole lot of dictionary issues, which we have not yet understood how to solve it. But there's also lots of other stuff in there, but it's, well, as you can see, this is 18,501 blocks, which means well, we assume very much that it's all lots of global variables and so on. And um, once we start to get the dictionary issue on the control or reference counts in general, it is to it is to assume that once it's like it's like a jam a, a lock jam. Once we pull out the lock that blocks everything else, then the garbage collector is going to take care of the vast majority of the rest. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And we actually for the Lipari stuff, uh, Gonzalez had found a function. And um, is it in the patch two yet or? Wait, what? The the the, the, the pari close thing. It's um I I it's all ready to go. I mean it's in my code. Yeah, it, it, it I think it, it starts up and it quits without sec faulting and now we're gonna see whether yep. that Yeah, oh yeah, I mean every it's all written in theory it deallocates it and I can't wait to run val I can't wait to see you run valgrind on it and have it work. Yeah, so this yeah. is gonna soon be thirty five megabytes still reachable memory, hopefully. Yep. So um, Yeah, we should do that right after your talk actually. Oh yeah, well. Or very soon. Well, we can do it on Sage Math. And just yeah, the patch is actually in Home was temp sitting there. So we have 
that one and the small one. This is this run. And you can see it leaked 480 kilobytes and the still reachable belly, belly budge is slightly higher, but that is actually due to the fact that we actually did a couple of things and so Python dictionaries got larger and some other stuff that got cached is still in there. Um, even, even if the possibly loss goes up or down after you fix an issue, it doesn't really matter because the accounting for bell run is faulty. I can actually show you some lines of code where it says, which, where, where you do a double free on a once allocated buffer, and it claims happily one allocation, two, uh, two deallocations, no memory was lost. Hmm. But, <laughs> well, I, uh, I have so many bug reports to write, it's just. <laughs> Well, I, I, You're a well, tool for generating bug reports. I think I get, well, I pretty much get paid to break software, so it's quite entertaining. <laughs> and I write very little code, so there's few few things people can find in my code, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> but once the tables are turned, it's going to be very bad, I see. So uh, that's the one. And the other one is... Uh, yeah, we'll see how your 20 doc tests turn out. <laughs> I wrote doc tests? Everybody has to write 20 doc tests to get reimbursed. Everybody? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> That's a little worse. So we have now 8 megabytes leaked and 529,256 blocks. God. And uh, my bet it's going to be in sparse linear algebra hmm. from experience. Wait, this is just computing the HECA operator? I mean, could it? This is this, is this code. That's weird. Well, it used to leak. Much more. Yeah. No, I was just trying on my laptop and it wouldn't, I mean, get memory usage wasn't um, changing. If I just kept redoing a smaller one, it would, get memory usage would never go up in my latest version. So I wonder what's going on. Well, this is two, eight, but get five, memory, but of one. course, get memory usage is not. No, I wouldn't count on that. Actually. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, just, it's like, it's like it could tell you. It yeah, this. exactly. It could tell you something useful, but it's not saying anything useful in this example, which. Makes it harder to debug, to find the bug. Okay, this is the top of the log, and this invalid read of size four is caused by we, or me particularly, not compiling with uh, PyMalloc. Once you compile without okay. PyMalloc, the vast majority of this invalid read goes away because it's uh, quite a couple of lines. So, um, well, let's jump to the end if I have an empty. Shift G. What? Shift G. Uh, not, not your search and hit enter, and then hit shift G. Okay, so there's the 100,000 bytes, which I think is uh, such, an yeah. su such an unusual number to malloc, because <laughs> what? I would do an order of two allocation, but who cares? Um, and now the interesting thing is, you can see these, this is, this is in Pyrex, so you have the import module and so on. This is the exact call trace. That's that's really strange because actually, we were just looking at it in its stack last night, and it it does do something to make it a power of two. So now I'm really confused. No, no, this is this this is without the patch. This is still 100,000. This is 2051 yeah. official. Yeah, but even then, it actually it called something that was supposed to make the stack a power of two. Yeah, so maybe that function's broken or something. That's yeah, possible. That code that where, that, where you uh, yeah. like US was two to the thirty second, and then you just divided by two until you malloc. Well, something? that that never got called, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but there were, that function that in that file that function was the, the first thing it did was took whatever the input was and then adjusted so that it was a valid Perry stack size. Of course, I guess okay. I don't know what that means though. Maybe a hundred thousand is Joel a valid size. NTL? What? Where's Joel NTL? Oh. Uh oh. Uh, well, oh, I thought, some, oh, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. There's some leak in it. There's static yeah. objects al allocated in NTL that are not deallocated in Shoe. You pretty much said he's not going to fix it, but the suggestion has been just like uh, the um, M4I code to add a, to make him non-static, add a deallocation routine at the very end, and call him an exit just to but, put the noise level down. But this is probably not that. This is printing well, this out. Is, this is string representation of a polynomial. Yeah, it's probably the string not dying or something. Strings, strings, strings are problematic. I mean, we found, yeah. we fixed we found a lot of issues, leak. and who knows what snuck back. There was a bunch of stuff where it was using C plus plus to allocate and trying oh. to use mal <laughs> to, to use free to deallocate. It's, it's all his fault. Yeah, it looks like that's it. Actually, I think we fixed some things along these lines. Yeah, we can actually fix something live, but um, no, no, no. I, I mean, in the past we fixed some things like this, but not this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think if the leak is going to get fixed tonight. So, uh, where's so the 
I mean, to lodge the next step of the office. Yeah, where's the, where's the guilty party? Yeah, I think Joel's hiding. He left already. Lucky him. Wait, so okay, well, now the, now the interesting bit is you have to, this is, wait, hold on, BG replace malloc dots. So that's saying that the, the new call is happening in BG replace malloc, right? But, but now this, this is like the, this is a, a problem with, with yeah, what does this mean? Mem mem check. Mm -hmm. it, it shows you where it was allocated. But I mean, you should, the thing is, I think he, he, he mentioned it already, that there was some shenanigans going on in the library somewhere with strings and new allocations and I just nodded. Well, it, I think, I remember some very, very similar bugs to this. It turned out that we were using operator new to allocate a buffer for a string, then using C++ in, indirection operators to fill the buffer with a string. And I think we were either not, I think we were using like free to free it or something yeah, stupid that like was, that. that was the mismatch. Or, or it was... Um, no, no, that was the mismatch. Yeah, that was and the mismatch stuff. There was another one which were... Um, why, is it, why doesn't it get freed? So it's because it's new square brackets? Well, we, got, we should look at So you have to, first. like, how does that work in... Maybe you have to do... There was another one where you had to do delete square brackets, I think. Yeah, but that, that was mismatched. Um, yeah, we use look, delete instead of delete just, square brackets. We should just look at the code and figure out where the delete goes. Yeah. But I think we use delete instead of delete square brackets. Yeah, yeah, that's so it was just misusing C++. That's, that's also a fake, well, <laughs> you would be very surprised how many times that happens. It's, yeah, it's really bad okay, when you do that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay, Devel, Sage, Sage. Libs. No, it's, it's Sage, Libs, MTL. Yep, you're on your way. Oh, sage, Libs? Yeah. No, Sage, no, Sage, Libs. Sage, Sage, oh, sage Libs. Right, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. yeah, I usually never monkey around with that code because I'm yep. one level more. Libs, NTL. You get to just tell us what to do with it. Uh, NTL. Wow, there's so many more files. <laughs> more, <laughs> more than one. Yeah. Oh, you still got an NTL that age? NTL, ZZPX, ZZP. <laughs> 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 never be referenced. Wow, it's modification time is pretty recent. Uh, I must have I must have it and it got start up. Yeah. I should delete it. Oh, I, I know I have to do a fresh build and to make my thing that makes the new source disk start with that. Yeah. And do a clone. Wait, how? Do, yeah, a clone shouldn't. Okay. Should get rid of it. Return string. We fixed that. We fixed the exact same problem. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It could be. Well, it's just. This could be. 132. Yeah. This is really difficult. Internet connection. Yeah, the latency is a killer. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, we fixed that. I mean, so it's left us an exercise for the reader. Well, or maybe our fix is wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is. Because, I mean, if your Valgrind showing that it's not getting freed, then there's something wrong with it. Is that the code that's actually running? Pro no, it, it, probably, because the line numbers match up. Let's ask Joel what is it. Yeah. He said there's something wrong, and I don't know if he's referring to that. But I mean, if you look, if you look at the actual, well, so this is roughly oh, eight megabytes, and uh, it's like a thousand twenty, a thousand seventy-one bytes somewhere else. So yeah, there's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of more important things. So now you check. Wait, that's, I mean, that's saying that somebody's trying to print like yeah, eight just, megabyte string. I don't know. Actually. Okay. Eight of eight bytes. Well. Yes. I hope not. <laughs> I mean. It, it, ah. That's really. Scary. There's another. There's another one that, that's. I mean, is somebody returning some value? I don't. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, it's can possible. Can we see the code that was generating this log again? Or can I see? No. The, yeah. It's, no, it's no, super no. singular. It's could be a heck operator, and it's also could be in the super singular module. So. Yeah, but it uses univariate polynomials. That's why. Yep. Mod p. No. Wait. Not mod p. What is it? Oh, it has a 
It's in characteristic zero. I wonder why it's using any polynomial mode. Oh, right, of course, because it's the method of graphs. So it's working in character. It's doing a bunch of root finding in characteristic p. Puts a number into a polynomial in two variables quickly, okay. and then finds the roots of the corresponding univariate polynomial. You have f of x, y, and you you plug in a value of x, and then you find the three roots or however many roots. For okay. Y. I don't know why a string conversion is happening, but the fact it's happening at all right, right, right. is a red flag that there's something really, really slow in the code. That's there's, there's coming from string conversions. Right, yeah. It shouldn't is, be is happening. Is it just converting between two libraries or something and no, they can only do it via strings? Yeah. Okay. Because it's the actual. No, it's actually. That's weird. No, but I mean, you see, the thing it's kind of disturbing because it's a pattern. It PX. twice. Twice, the same uh, construct uses the construct all of, well, at least twice. Yeah. So, um, I bet it's something like. Uh, NTL ZZPX rep, I think, is just a list, which then you do Python eval on. So, this is a fast way of, do, of doing the conversion. But okay. there's vastly yeah. faster ways to do this conversion. Well, it was much easier than this. This code should never actually have to happen. Right. Because it's. I, I don't even understand why it would actually create, turn, turn the internal representation of, of, of univariate polynomials. That's because what, that's what Craig just said. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it, it's uh, where it's converting from the NTL object to a. A list, object maybe. Probably, yeah, list. probably a Python list or something. But it does something with the strings? But, I mean, yes. by default, all of the yep. conversions to stage happen via strings. Because For string with NTL, works. with NTL, yeah. with NTL. Well, because you can't get the internal representation in the other way, or is it just? Yeah. No, it was. Well, it's really happening no, that, right here. That one is new because I, I would have seen. Yeah. There's there's some ticket open in track. There exist oh, cases no, still. You're, you're right. I yeah. Did, no, this it, it will all be fixed. Oh, but it's not fixed yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, such as this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just think you could fix this memory leak. <laughs> you could hide this memory leak <laughs> more accurately. <laughs> Don't fix it. Yeah. Like for stuff, I just know what any of these functions that return are pointed at, like some string that's being allocated. Because, like, all of them are going to go. You still need a well, string I mean, representation. Yeah, the, the string representation. We I mean, need to be able to print the answer. Sure. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's what's getting called right there, right? It'll be easier to do because you could do more C++ stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just a question of the only people, I mean, some of the library should never use that unless it really wants to. I think the string you should just pull it out, make it into a Python list, yeah. and then just print that. I mean, that's yes, so that's what I was just, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Yeah. So. Why, use, um, why use NTL string representation function yeah. at all? Yeah. So this could all just be completely removed. Yeah, it's a well, wonderful it should suck performance wise anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The string conversion. It yeah. does. It yeah. totally sucks. Well, so if you're lucky, in two or three days, you're going to have something new. Well, you, got, you, get, you know who to pester. So. <laughs> All right, so. Well, that was, was it. That so. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, there definitely needs to be a Valgrind talk at Sage Day 6. Yeah, it should, should be. We need to make sure they know we're professionals there. <laughs>